So a little time with my journal this morning. Yesterday, I only got one thing done on my list. That was to write about our menus last night. I don't want to fall behind on them. And that feels just fine by me. I've mentioned before that I worried that if I used lists to organize my day in any way, that I'd start feeling structured or put in a box. And nah, that's not happening. And I'm celebrating the fact that the reason nothing got done is a friend called and said, want to go spend the afternoon together. You know, what could be better than that? Of course, now that I've washed up all of the goodies that I bought yesterday, you know, see them all lined up and shining. But now that I have that done, I'm gung-ho to get the spices done for my kitchen counter. That's a little bit of a bigger project. I'm a bit bummed that I don't feel well again today. It's something that's been picking at me now for probably a week or more. And I seem to have a fever. I thought that I was getting a cold because I'm having problems breathing, but I think maybe I'm having a little problem with Lady Lupus. I actually wrote this down in my journal, and, and strange as it might sound, I don't re record the details of how I'm feeling in any of my journals. I never have. I don't like reading my own whining because that's how it can seem. But I noted it in my journal because I'm going to track and see if there's a pattern. As it seems to have been a pretty regular on and off occurrence now for a couple of weeks. So I think it's better that I note it and pay attention to it. Because I wonder if I had been better about noticing things at the end of the summer, would I have realized that I was going into a, a flare with lupus that actually I kind of sunk into and didn't stay aware enough of what was going on. So I did jot that down in my journal for today and it felt odd because I don't think I have ever unless I've been in the hospital and made note of that or something rather dramatic I don't think I've ever really noted much about my illness in my journal oh back when I was first diagnosed I prattled on about it constantly because I didn't know you know what it was going to mean for me but since then it's not been a part of what I feel like capturing in a day's time so the list isn't too long today there's a couple things in it on it other than the things I just mentioned, but whether I get to them or not isn't important to me. I just want to have some fun today, doing things that bring me joy. Yeah, whatever I do today, I want it to be something that I'm having fun with. So Roger's gone for a little bit, <clears throat> which means the TV isn't on. You know, I have that terrible love-hate relationship with the television. I really don't like televisions and all their noises. So, while he's gone, maybe I can at least do some of the video that isn't... Oh, Roger just called. He's out um, doing a golf cart ride and he said there's police in the neighborhood, and we don't have police in the neighborhood here very often. Sometimes in the summertime when people are a little crazy with their partying, uh, it can get a little rowdy. But even then, it's not like all that often that something goes on. We don't have that kind of neighborhood. So the disadvantage of the fact that I could set up the whole tripod and maybe even talk to you rather than just show you pictures and talk over it is. So what is on the plan is making... Maple snickerdoodles, which are basically snickerdoodles that just have some maple flavoring in them. And because I swear it's that kind of day, I'm not making maple snickerdoodles because I didn't do such a good job checking the pantry and didn't have baking soda. I only had baking powder. That's a good. I can do the other. The dessert that I had planned on this week and we're gonna make peanut butter bars instead go with the flow Annie go with the flow this is the kind of thing that drives me batty though I have to admit well this one can't be easier so it's gonna be a quick cooking in the kitchen kind of thing because the only thing I need is brown sugar corn syrup some vanilla some peanut butter and some crushed cornflakes the plain cornflakes so you can't get too much easier than that. So let me get the ingredients together for that. 
instead of what I thought I was going to make. So being me and bringing the camera over to the stove I start obsessing with how clean is my stove but you know it is what it is isn't it <laughs> I'm not clean enough for you actually I don't think it's all that bad but you know I'm gonna worry about it anyway so really this cannot be that much easier it's a quarter cup of brown sugar it's a half a cup of corn syrup didn't specify, specify whether it should be light or dark, so I got the light. Probably doesn't matter a whole lot, does it? We'll find out. And it is a teaspoon of vanilla extract and a cup of peanut butter. Yeah, you can tell I'm not like the best measurer. I don't work that way. Which sometimes these things work out well, and sometimes I wish I had followed directions a little bit better. So what we have to do with this is melt it down. And by the way, if you're hearing something that sounds like an airplane landing in the middle of my kitchen, all of you who live in mobile homes feel my pain. Yes, yeah, it's, it's what happens with heaters and when they come on in a mobile home rattle from one end of the house to the other. So let me see if I can get you down so you can see. Basically, we end up with a peanut buttery looking smoothness. It kind of has the consistency of, of icing, actually. So we'll see what the next step is. I think it has something to do with those cornflakes. dishwasher pantry, which you know from my other vlogs that that's what we have. Now, I need three cups of cornflakes. Hey, Bogey. Maybe Roger's coming back. And it says to crush them a little bit. Bogue, it's okay. And stir in the peanut butter. Part. It says to spread it into a 9 by 13 pan. Do you think that would fill up a 9 by 13 pan? <laughs> I'm thinking not. I guess we're about to see. I would have thought it would fit better, for instance, in a um, uh, maybe an 8 by 8 pan, but I'm going to go with what it says. No, I didn't say to put anything in there to keep it from sticking, but it's sticky. So, let's see what happens. Worst case, I could just make some more and add it in, couldn't I? So, it says to spread that out. There is no way this fits a 9 by 13 pan. It doesn't even come close. Okay, so I'm going to make another batch. Say, I knew that wasn't going to work. So I will make a new another batch, and then I'll come back to you after I've done that. Obviously, it's quick and easy to do, so it's not a biggie. I'm so good at this, I actually have peanut butter all over my camera now. <laughs> yeah, that's how sophisticated I am. Nah, I won't show you a video of me licking the peanut butter off my camera. Yeah, I'll deal with that in a minute. At least this time. It will fit 
And then I have my 13 pan. I think I'm going to use my hands to flatten that down a little bit. Sometimes the hands are the best thing to get things done. Now this is it. That phone really needs to stop ringing today, doesn't it? So where was I? <laughs> We're starting to get phone calls because, you know, we have a lot of senior citizens that live here and um, seeing police cars in the neighborhood is not a good thing. It terrifies them, absolutely terrifies them. I mean, they'll be terrified for days now. That's what's sad about that. And um, there were, um, there was even a helicopter flying over earlier. So, you know, we have a lot of terrified senior citizens. And we all watch out for them. So we're going to start getting phone calls now from the old people who are either seeing the policeman or saw the helicopter and they're terrified. So Roger is um, on the board of our homeowners association. So he'll actually be out and about checking in with them and making sure they're okay and they're not worried. But we still don't really know what's going on. So I know those poor old guys out there are terrified. So anyway, this is it. That is all you do. You put it in the refrigerator and after it has cooled, you cut it into bars. Can you get much easier than that? So don't you hate when you record something and then you realize you never did hit the record button? <laughs> I just did that. So I've filled these little guys with parsley, basil, and garlic powder. Hi Ernie. I think he always wonders who I'm talking to when I record. I think he thinks I'm talking to him. So I did that. And this ended up not being for flour. It's so big that I decided it was going to be all about my little garbage pail for like I put vegetable clippings and stuff like that in it um, instead of putting them in the trash can to um, you know keep them from smelling and yes dishes to do and here is the containers that I have so far still need just a couple to finish what I need to do and the olive oil and no scatty in the scatty one yet and this I decided to put my teas here and in case you don't recognize the tea canisters, whoops, that's the back of it, that's not very interesting. I I tend to get my tea from Stash Tea. And of course they come in these nice, ooh, that's dusty. Looks like I need to dust my, ew, oh well, one more little task to do. Dust the top of my tea containers. They were actually sitting on a shelf and obviously I should have dusted them before I put them down here. So I put my teas there and I have my tea strainers and so you know that I fell in love with this one. It's the coolest little tea strainer and it has an automatic thing you can put it in so you don't get drippies all over the place. So I put those there and that corner's worked out pretty much the way I want to. The only thing I don't like about the corner is this wallpaper. I don't like it. You know I don't like it. This is probably the second or third time I bitched about it. Um, but we're going to paint over it, so it'll be going bye-bye before too long, as soon as I get in the painting mood again. Damn, I did it again. It's the third time today I've recorded something without turning the camera on. It's one of those kinds of days today. I'm glad at this point I'm doing nothing else that requires moving around. Because I think the secret to whatever this is I'm dealing with is to get off my feet and relax. And uh, you know I love you all because I'm recording this. My mom had an expression when you look sick that you look like death warmed over. <laughs> and it's not that I'm feeling that bad, but um, I know I'm looking kind of tasty. And so let me tell you about my project. Now if you know me from elsewhere, you know about this project. So you know what's going on. Um, the spice bottles that you see at the back of my kitchen counter. 
they um they don't please me they don't please me at all I bought the racks they're on recently that pleased me it got them all out of my kitchen cupboard so part of my goal has been met which is to have space in the cabinet for baking things and yeah it's worked out well so anyway like I said, if you know me from elsewhere, you know I've had this project, which is to get new bottles for those spice bottles. The ones that are there now came with spice racks I got. Oh, I've had them a long time. And the thing is, I spent money for them. It was back when I had money to spend. <laughs> they were actually not too cheap. But they don't seal correctly, and they're just a pain in the butt to use. You have to spend 10 minutes trying to get them to seat properly to put them back on. So I didn't like the ones with the chrome tops, pretty that they look. And I also didn't like the um, plastic ones, you know, the ones that when you get spice at the grocery store, they come in those like McCormick's, they come in those spicy ones. So I decided that I wanted to change my spice bottles. So I started looking for you know, glass bottles that you could buy. I wanted glass, I didn't want the plastic. You know, strange things happen to herbs in plastic containers after a while, don't you think? So I was looking, 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 and, and um, I thought, you know what, what I really want is the spice jars I had when I first set up house as a 17 year old. Yeah, 17 years old. I was a baby setting up my house my first time. That's a long story, my friends, but another day. And I wanted the spice bottles I had in those days. And when I hold this up close to the camera, you're probably going to recognize this. And I had gone to eBay. Well, actually, I searched online. Well, I didn't realize that I'm not the only one that wants them. They're now collectibles, so they were terribly expensive. Um, but I was a woman on a mission, and I kept finding, I guess, bless their hearts, people who didn't know they had collectibles and were selling them a lot less expensively. And um, I bought enough for all the spices I currently have, plus extra bottles, because we're always growing our spice collections, aren't we? So this is what they look like, and you're going to recognize them if you are, oh, 50 and above. They start getting a lot cheaper as time went by. Let me hold this up so you can see it, and hopefully it where I can see them. I'm holding it up where you can see it. You recognize these guys? Let me get back a little bit. So I have, so they have the glass, glass top, and they don't have the sprinkle thing. I never quite understand sprinkle things in um, spice bottles. I never sprinkle them. I measure them, or I use a dash, or I use a little pinch in my hand, or whatever. But except for cinnamon, I never sprinkle any. So anyway, the project at the moment is to undo a lot of these, get them out of their wrappings. I need to use a little acetone on the ones that came from this seller because they have the original labels still stuck on them, so I need to get them off. And then I have new labels to write up and to stick on them, and my spices are all going to be lined up like little soldiers, all looking the same way. This is the kind of thing, my friends, which excites me. So here's my first little army probably seem a lot better now in this light, of spice bottles. Acetone didn't work, and I tried hot water and soaking, and it takes more hand power than I have because of the problems I have with my knuckles and the pain in my hands. So I'm just going to put the new label that I'm writing on top of this old label. And I have a little siphon. A little siphon, so I will I do this with one hand or not. Maybe I can, or maybe I cannot. Could not, which is good, because it means the seals are still good. So I will be filling these up. And then, I bought, probably won't be able to see on here. Jeez, I'm not even focusing. No. Yeah, you can see them. There they are. See, they're oval, according to how the light hits it oval labels that I'm going to be putting on the bottles. Oh, I didn't realize when I bought them they were shiny, which I could do without. But I tried out, I just did a test label, and my erasable gel pens will write on it. So that's the plan. Fill these little guys up, 
and label them and they go in those racks in the kitchen as in alphabetical order just in case if you wonder am I really that anal yes I am so what I will probably do next is show you a picture or a short video of how it looks this is how I'm occupying myself this afternoon my friends like I said I'm easily entertained so I didn't get all of the bottles done but I got some of them done And I'm liking it. Dinner tonight is a salad and leftover honey barbecue chicken and a new recipe I'm trying twice baked cauliflower. And not exactly a recipe that's low on calories or even low on fat because the recipe said specifically don't use the low fat versions of the cream cheese and the sour cream we don't use low fat versions of anything anyway for health concerns on them but I wouldn't say this is a low calorie mm, low sugar I would assume because um, it's kind of like a twice baked potato recipe only with cauliflower so let me tell you what you do you get a large head of cauliflower and you chop it up into some pieces and you cook it in a pot of boiling salted water the recipe says until tender but not overly soft because it's going to cook more in the oven so you don't want it to get too mushy drain it well and mash it with a potato masher and don't worry about leaving some chunks in it actually suggests that you do so here is the other ingredients that you're going to use. Four ounces of cream cheese, a half a cup of sour cream, a quarter cup of minced green onions. I think some of you will know them as scallions and some as spring onions. We all seem to call them something different. I actually know them as scallions. A quarter cup of freshly grated Parmesan and six slices of bacon cooked until very crisp. Blot the them with a paper towel to get off any excess fat and then crumble them up and a cup of sharp cheddar cheese so what you do is after you've mashed up your cauliflower you mix in the cream cheese the sour cream the green onions and the parmesan and half of the bacon or I think it said three quarters of the crumbled bacon so you're going to leave a little bit of the bacon so mush it all up stir it all up put it in I put it in it said put it in a medium sized casserole dish I put it in an 8 by 8 it worked fine which is perfect for that then you sprinkle the cheddar cheese on top of that and the bacon that you reserved the little bit of bacon you kept extra on top of that and you bake it for 30 or 35 minutes until hot and bubbly so dinner tonight honey barbecued chicken thighs and twice baked cauliflower the twice baked cauliflower was a hit we will definitely be having that again we're always trying to come up with new things to do with cauliflower and this was a winner we won't be having it constantly because obviously it was a little heavy on the calorie side <laughs> but it was very yummy a nice way to taste cauliflower in yet another way So that's it for tonight, and I'll leave you with a tiny moment by the bay, of course. We had a little dusting of snow this morning, but it melted by noontime, and that was a nice bright and sunny day. And I took this picture from our front porch because it was nice to see the blue sky back after so many days of it being gone.